So now we move on to the 19 gates of Netzach. We'll do the first three of them today. So, <clears throat> the sentient self, <clears throat> the staying of self-will, <clears throat> its primary inclination is the urge to emerge. And that brings us to Netzach. In the context of this realm of significance, of interaction with other, remember this is all about self and other, that's what the sentient body is for, to navigate this interaction between self and other, in this context, that urge to merge manifests as resonance. We resonate with other. That's our first instinct, our, our default as the, the solitary self. Its default is that urge to merge. And here, as the sentient self, this is a solitary self with a sentient body, okay? So its primary urge is to merge. And we do that here through resonance. When we encounter other, we affect other. This is the expression of our essential meaning affects everything around us and we likewise are affected in the same way by everything around us. Everything communicates, expresses its essential meaning and we, we perceive that. That's what consciousness does. It perceives and expresses. So that's what we're doing here. We perceive and are affected by other. We start to change. We open ourselves to other. We, we loosen the, the, the boundaries of self in order to interact with other. We let them in. We welcome the effect that they have upon us. And likewise, we welcome the effect that we have upon them. So in this way, when we communicate our essential meaning, when we express our essential meaning, it affects the rest of the universe. This is true for every being is as it expresses its essential meaning, which it does through its very existence. Our existence is the expression of our essential meaning into the cosmos. So when we express ourselves, it has an effect. It's grounded in that way. Our expression... Uh, meets some end. Uh, uh, there's always an ear to hear. The universe, the cosmos, always is affected by our expression. And that's what Netzach is. Netzach is that exchange of energy we have with the universe. As we open ourselves and are affected by it and affect it. Okay. So that's Netzach. <clears throat> that energy exchange in Netzach is the vitality of the universe. It is the vital energy. Netzach is just full with the vital energy. 
Now, <clears throat> we mostly think of Netzach as the center of emotion, really the feeling of emotions. Um, and that's a part of it. But it is that vibrancy that we feel in emotion. Okay? Emotion is a special thing. It's more than just thought, okay? But it is thought. Um, it has a vibrancy to it, an urgency to it that affects us. Physically, it affects us in all these different uh, biochemical ways. The physiology of emotion is very interesting. The effects that emotion has on us physically. It's also happening in that same way at this astral level. There is a vitality to emotion, a necessity to emotion that comes from mm, really unconscious and subconscious levels. Emotions are not conscious things. We don't generally intentionally feel emotions. Emotions just overtake us, you know? They just come upon us. <clears throat> and that's the vitality of Netzach. <clears throat> so, our first gate of Netzach, <clears throat> Netzach, um, <laughs> is from Kether straight down to Netzach and back up. Okay, now from a universal perspective, we start in Kether as, as the eye, as the whole, whole of awareness. And then we look down at all of these sentient cells, this whole body of sentient cells, we descend into this whole body of sentient cells, realizing that they radiate, that they resonate, that they affect everything around them, that it is one thing. And then we rise back up to Kether. Now, this is Kether blessing <clears throat> this collective of sentient cells, or, well, yeah, sentient cells, all affecting each other, all resonating with each other, all vibrating in effect, you know, together. Okay, and uh, from a personal level, we start in the eye, and we join with the eye, and then we go down this hidden path rapidly into our sentient selves in the midst of this infinite number of other sentient selves all affecting each other. And we bring the I into uh, that so that the I can experience firsthand <laughs> this resonance. Okay. And then we pass back up to the I. <clears throat> it's really, again, just connecting this the sense of unity and seeing where that comes from, where that instinct, that urge to merge, comes from, and what uh, the resonance is mimicking, the sort of unity that it strives for. Okay. <clears throat> the second gate, <clears throat> comes from Bina all the way down <clears throat> to the 
that song. Now this is a very significant path in the tree of life. It is the only connection that passes from, from the pillar of severity and travels to, connects with the pillar of mercy. The only path that goes in that direction. The mother letters all pass from mercy into severity. Okay? So this is the only time that this flow is contradicted. Okay? Going from severity to mercy. <clears throat> you know, from a, uh, the eternal level to the lowest point in the temporal realm on the pillar of mercy. Okay. And it crosses the Alifresh crossing. Okay, now I've mentioned this before. This is where <clears throat> the Alifresh crossing really starts to become significant. There are two hidden paths that cross over this point in the, uh, the broad tree, okay? It's the only point in the tree where four paths intersect. Now, we haven't spoken before about the intersections of paths and the significance it has um, the effect that it has, but here we really encounter it. <clears throat> so, as you're traversing this gate, this path, this moment, this, uh, this crossing of the Alifresh has significance in your experience. It shapes the experience of this path working, okay? And consequently of this gate, okay? So, <clears throat> with this path and the other hidden path that makes the crossing in the opposite direction, there is no universal versus personal experience because at that crossing of Alifresh, whatever comes down this path goes through an individualizing process, a personalizing process. It is affected by the solitary self, okay? That is the power of this Alifresh crossing. <clears throat> so, whether we start as the personal uh, greater self and descend, or whether we start as the, the, the uh, uh, supernal Bina, the whole of Bina and descend, when we get to the Alifresh crossing, it shifts into uh, a focus on an individual self, your individual self. There is no escaping this. This path, this connection, is all about you, okay? Each greater self has this connection with each of its individuals, but the only way to travel this path is as your individual self, okay? In other words, you can't be in your greater and seeking to uh, explore <clears throat> another individual um, that is part of your greater, you can't pass into him, into that person, via this path. It just doesn't work. You just end up back in, in yourself, basically. So, <clears throat> so, let's start, let's take it from the personal perspective, it's easier. So we start in Bina as 
your greater self. And you look down to Netzach, and you see, you see in Netzach all of your greater selves. I mean, all of your, <laughs> all of your solitary selves that you give birth to throughout all of time space. Okay, you see them all there. You begin to descend into Netzach. When you reach the Alephresh crossing, oh, it can be different. I mean, it seems to evolve change over time. I remember the first time I made this crossing, it was like suddenly I'm walking through thick mud or treacle or, you know, something really thick that I had trouble, you know, moving through. It took great effort. And it's at that point that the focus, then, when you're looking down to Netzach, the only solitary self you see is yourself. Okay? It is transformed here into that individual connection between your greater self and your sentient self. You reach your sentient self. And as you reach your sentient self here in Netzach, in this space where it's all about resonance and your power to resonate with uh, who you want to resonate with, but at the same time you're resonating with everything, you feel the connection with your greater self, the direction of your greater self. Your greater self is always present in your resonating, that reminder that, oh, this is who you are. This is who you are resonating in the cosmos, okay? And then we pass back up. And uh, the passing back up across the Alifresh crossing is uh, undramatic. <laughs> this direction of the, the path is very uneventful, okay? There is no experience like the descent. Because the descent, it focuses it in on the individual self. But, you know, you're passing up as the individual self. So it's the usual, you know, release back up into your greater self. Or back up into the whole of Bina. If you're taking it from the universal perspective. So this is, both of these paths, both of these gates, <clears throat> sort of change your footing in that process of resonating. You realize <clears throat> I guess the biggest takeaway from these two gates, and specifically the, the, this one from Bina, is that you are always yourself in the face of this opening of yourself. You can open and still maintain your selfhood as you do that. So there's a new sense of assurance in that radiation, and that resonation, and a greater power to it. Um, yeah, 
because so much of resonance is completely unconscious and out of our mm, control. You know, we can influence and direct because we do have this self-determination, this power of self-determination, but it's an unconscious thing that we are controlling, sort of after the fact, <laughs> as it were. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, that's the first two gates. The third gate combines the two via the path <coughs> of Vav, okay, of Taurus. That perfection, the perfecting path. <coughs> so, this gate goes from Bina down to Netzach, that, you know, crossing path, crosses out afresh, hits Netzach, then comes up from Netzach into Kether, and then down the path of Vav into Bina, and then back around, okay? <clears throat> This, this just combines the, the two gates, the first two gates, is really all that's happening here. Now, it's interesting because when you do this, going from the universal perspective, when you take that path down in the net sock, you end up in a very personal experience of net sock. So coming back up to Kether, I mean, it's just like normal because you're going from the personal to the universal experience no matter what. So there's no difference here. And then that Kether down to Bina, again, it's no difference. So there's really, uh, the only difference from these two perspectives is that coming down into, uh, you know, crossing, the Alifresh crossing. That individualizing of the universal is much more dramatic than what happens when you come down just from your own greater self. So, uh, this uh, sequence really just uh, clarifies your selfhood <laughs> in that process of resonating with other, opening to other, becoming part of the collective here in this way. But at the same time, holding on to your boundaries of self and other, because that's what this realm is all about. Not just the interaction between self and other, but maintaining those boundaries of selfness and otherness. And that's the adventure. That is the vitality in Netzach is that sort of friction between selfness and otherness, okay? So, back again with more Gates of Netzach next time. All right.